Happy hump day, friends. We are live here for our Wednesday live Q&A, and I'm going to wait for y'all to trickle in, and I'm going to get to one of the first thoughts and questions. Hey, Lisa. So uh, I'm chatting with a possible new member of our group, and the question realistically was, what about keto? <laughs> And if you are someone who has friends in your community who are on the keto bandwagon, let me give you a little bit of lowdown of keto and what it is so you guys just have an understanding so you can make an educated response. Hey, Chanley. So keto, uh, the keto diet is ideally uh, meant to be a place where you can get your body into what's called a ketogenic state. So our body will go into a ketogenic state when we reduce carbs pretty excessively. Uh, the carb count for a day should be around 30 grams, and that includes fruits and vegetables. Uh, obviously, all grains are out of the picture. And what happens when you go keto, and when you truly go keto, so 30 grams or less, is your body will start to produce a different fuel source as opposed to carbohydrates, and those are ketones. So these happen in the absence of carbs, and essentially this has to stay there. So, hey Hong, Hong, how are you? Uh, so if you are in a ketogenic state, you essentially have to maintain that extremely low carb intake to stay in ketosis. Uh, this takes about two days or so to get into a ketogenic state, so your body's producing ketones, and you can test this out by your urine. Uh, so fun stuff there. Uh, but basically for people who say that they are on keto, I would say the majority, about 10% of the people who say they're doing keto are actually on keto. Uh, and mainly because alcohol is not something that is included. Uh, now that you guys know the impact of alcohol, when you have one glass of alcohol, guess what? You're not in a ketogenic state anymore and therefore you have to start the whole process over again. Um, it can be very beneficial for some individuals, especially if they have any autoimmune disorders. So, so Alzheimer's, epilepsy, things like that, um, they can be very beneficial for those. And some people have had great results on keto. Uh, the thing is, is that the sustainability is really kind of the biggest um, threat in terms of making a lifestyle. And uh, the fact is, is that there's no veggies. There's not really any veggies in keto. Hey, Darcy, nice to see you. Uh, so we're talking a little bit about keto, so if you missed the beginning, you can always look at it again. Uh, but because there are not a lot of carbs allowed um, to get your body into that state, then you're not getting a lot of those essential vitamins and minerals that our body is naturally meant to consume and digest. It's, we have so many vegetables that uh, the, the earth creates, and if we're removing those completely from our diet, there's a lot of uh, really healthy benefits that we're not going to be receiving. Uh, Darcy, you just asked a question, and I'm going to bring it up on, uh, let me see, on Facebook on my phone real quick so that I can, yeah, okay. So your question was about energy levels, especially because you're a teacher and in the afternoon. So basically, when I hear this, what I'm thinking is, are you having a snack in the afternoon? Specifically for you, Darcy, um, I'm going to see if I can open up your log real quick as well. So when I hear that uh, people are having lower energy levels, I immediately go, okay, what are you eating and what are you drinking around that time? Darcy, can you share your uh, MyFitnessPal username with me if you don't mind? Because then I can just take a look. And then while I'm waiting for that, I'll kind of go into some other questions. But initially, my immediate thought goes into, if you're having these energy slumps in the afternoon, I'd like to know kind of what is revolving around your day in terms of intake and also water intake. So if we're not hydrated, we will absolutely have a tendency to um, feel lethargic throughout the day, not only in the afternoon. But I'd like to kind of hear a little bit more about that. And then while I'm waiting, I'm going to go into some of the other questions that we've got coming up here. Oh, thank you. Oh, hold on. Drampino. Okay, for some reason, I don't have you as a friend on my fitness pal. What the hell? I'm going to add you real quick. 
and see if I can bring this up. I just sent you an invite. Let's see if that works. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to just process itself out, uh, the next question here is, what are the top vegetables that have the most nutrients and keep you fuller for longer? I've been eating a ton of broccoli, but I'd like to mix it up. Rebecca. Okay, a lovely question, Rebecca. So ah, the top vegetables that fill you up. Uh, so when we think of vegetables that fill us up, it's really going to be a combination of water and fiber. And so when I think of that, I think of the water-filled vegetables will usually be the most filling as well as the ones that have higher fiber. So the higher fiber ones will definitely going to be things like broccoli, uh, all your cruciferous vegetables, um, so cauliflower. Uh, things that have high water will be like cucumber, celery, jicama, uh, let me see, tomatoes. These things will have more water in them. Um, Brussels sprouts are also one that have high fiber. Uh, let me see. Asparagus is a really great one. Um, asparagus actually is a natural diuretic as well, so it'll help your body to excess um, to shed excess water. Oh, thanks, Darcy. Okay. Uh, so I would just really kind of start to get creative. Um, look through some of the vegetables and go like, hey, have I ever tried that before? Uh, some of my favorites lately are zucchini. I love baking zucchini with mushrooms. It's delicious. I just spray a little bit of coconut oil on it. I put salt and pepper and I bake it in the oven at 275 for about 20 minutes and that's delicious. Um, I also really like trying new things like uh, kale salads, uh, bok choy is really great. Uh, let me see. And if uh, Lisa, if you have any ones that come to mind, because I'm pulling, I'm pulling here from my database, <laughs> my mental database, instead of like looking at any list. Uh, let me see. I would start with those, but broccoli is great because it's a lot of roughage. Um, but I would definitely start to add a variety because if when you add variety, you're going to get more nutrients, a, a more a larger variety of nutrients in there. Okay, so Darcy, I'm going to go right back to your meal plan here. Let's see if it allows me to see ya. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. I hope you don't mind. Okay, Darcy, so immediately what I'm seeing is that first thing in the morning we don't have, especially today, I'm just looking at today, uh, we have a raisin cinnamon bagel, cream cheese, and mixed fruit. This is 75 grams of carbs at one meal. This is a ton of carbohydrates for your body to metabolize. And so what happens with this kind of morning intake is your blood sugar levels will spike and then they will drop rather quickly. Not only will they spike, but they will also be spiked in excess, and so you won't be in a position where your body will naturally move to using stored fat as energy, because you'll have more carbs and your body will eff effectively be able to metabolize at one time. So bagels are notorious for having a ton of carbohydrates, so half a bagel is like a great serving, or else swap to like two pieces of sourdough toast, or an English muffin where you'll have low carb but still feel like you get like two pieces of something. Um, and then add protein to it. So protein will help to slow the digestion of sugar. And so having protein and a carb first thing in the morning is really gonna help to set, um, help to set the stage for your blood sugar levels right out of the gate. So that's why we're really looking to pair a protein with absolutely all carb intake. The only time that there's an exception is uh, before your workouts. So then mid-morning or meal two, we have a banana, and that's going to be a simple sugar. It's going to release very quickly in your body, doing the same thing that breakfast did. So you'll be already having these highs and lows of your energy levels. Um, we've got protein coming in in other parts of the day, but it looks like the meals, like lunchtime, it's just more of everything that your body can metabolize. So that kind of really large meal will cause you to feel sleepy in the afternoon, 100%. So yeah, much easier to do that. Um, I'm looking at yesterday just so I'm not taking a like you know single day um, sample just in case that was a off day. Um, meal one yesterday, you got some protein in there, which is awesome. I would add a complex carb into that too, so you get a full balanced meal to set your energy levels for the day, uh, your energy and blood sugar levels. Um, meal two, there was a little bit of salami with mozzarella. I would 
absolutely make sure that you have a carb with that as well. And also two pieces, we don't know what that is. Uh, so I would make sure that you are as accurate as possible in terms of weight. Um, meal three, turkey and Swiss sandwich. Again, we don't really know how much you had. Um, so in this case, I would really highly recommend entering items in per ingredient. We do have a balance of carbohydrates and fat and protein. However, it's more than double what we're looking for for one meal. So in this case, I would actually split it. Um, I would split that sandwich, like take the cheese off because it's adding a ton of fat, and then uh, you'll have kind of like that meal two times instead of just once. Um, but that size of a meal will absolutely cause you to go into a food coma in the early afternoon. So the ideal is that you would spread your intakes as evenly as possible throughout the day. So we're really looking to have a protein paired with a carbohydrate or a small amount of fat, like ideally under 10 grams, with a carbohydrate as well. That kind of balance will help to stabilize your blood sugar levels, stabilize your energy levels, and making sure you're getting at least 80 ounces of water a day will really help to move all these things through. Um, that would be, that's immediately what I can see. I can see by your intake right now, it's not balanced. Um, Darcy says, I haven't been snacking as much as I normally do. I wasn't sure if it was that or just going back to work after being off for two months, but those foods sound yummy. And then in the fall, all the squash and potatoes. Darcy says, it's not been as good this week as I'd like. Um, bad planning on my part. I thought when the school board said they'd provide breakfast that it would be healthier. Totally got it. This week has been off. Okay, I understand. But either way, I would say that the reason that you're having those low energy levels is that massive sandwich at lunch. Um, if you're able to spread intake out or split that sandwich in two, think about skipping the cheese because the cheese is super heavy in terms of fat. Um, it's great that you're choosing turkey when you are choosing that sandwich. Um, load up on all the veggies. And then make sure that you're entering items per ingredient so you can see where the impact is coming from. When we put in like just a sandwich from Arby's, guess what? They're not weighing that stuff in the back. Hell no. Uh, so you want to be as specific as you can so you can kind of pick and choose and go like, oh crap, if I add roasted bell peppers, that actually adds a lot more fat because it's been roasted in oil. Who would have thought? So it'll teach you a lot when you are entering in items per ingredient. And that's really what we want to get you to. We want to get you to have this internal just database of being able to look at an item and go, oh, I totally know exactly what's in that because then you won't have to log anymore. And that's the ultimate goal. We don't want you to have to log for the rest of your life. We want you to build the education so that you can identify what's in the foods you're consuming or that you're choosing and then make appropriate choices um, with that information. I hope that helps. And thank you for letting me um, dissect your log while we're live. It's very, very helpful. Um, and um, all the power to you as being a teacher. Oh my goodness, so much respect for that. Okay, we're going to go right into our next question because I have a hard stop at 5.30 today. Uh, let me see. The next one is from Ashley. How to add weight in exercises without straining? Trial and error, I would guess. Is it best better to do higher weight with less reps or do or more reps with lower weights? Okay. So, Ashley, my dear, uh, what I would say here is that if you feel like anything is straining, please let us know. Please let us know. Please let us know what you feel like is straining, uh, what exercise, where in your body, because we want to help you to never feel strain anywhere. Um, in that case, I would definitely err on the side of if something doesn't feel right, you should stop it <laughs> and just move on to the next exercise and then let us know and we can help you with the form or uh, adjustments if needed. Um, the other thing is that I would not add more weight. I would do the movements to the best of your ability with a proper form with lower weight as you're getting those new movement patterns um, into your body. So when we start new training programs, we're basically building these new neural pathways from our brain to our muscles that will start to become stronger and stronger the more frequently we activate them. So the more frequently we do a bicep curl, the more frequently and more efficient the communication channels between our brain to contracting our bicep in that range of motion will get. So the more you do something, the stronger that communication stream will become. And so initially in these workout plans, we really want you to uh, kind of start off a little bit slower. 
uh, so that you're making sure that you're doing things in proper form and then start with lower weight and then slowly as you feel stronger then you want to start to add weight so if you are using lower weight then you can yeah lower weight then you can move between like 12 to 15 rep range we don't really need to go above uh, 15 reps you're not really going to get a huge benefit from that um, especially in terms of building muscle so 15 reps can be the max in this scenario uh, unless you're doing something where it's like plyometric and there's jumping and things like that, then we can start to get into 15 plus. Uh, but I hope I hope that helps. Let me see here. Darcy says, totally makes sense. Definitely fell back into bad habits, which, which going back to work. Thanks so much. You're totally welcome. I totally understand that. But as I was looking through your logs, I was like, it's pretty obvious while you obvious to me why you have a drop in energy in the afternoon because I think I would totally feel that way. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Do you have, next question, do you have opinions about LaCroix, LaCroix, La LaCroix, I don't know how to pronounce this, you guys, and other sparkling water with natural flavors? From a nutritional standpoint, is it the same as drinking water? Does the carbonation have any negative effect on the body? This is from Kelly. So uh, carbonated water, no, it's not the same as still water. Uh, so generally speaking, most carbonated water has had the carbonation added to it. Um, it's not naturally occurring. And so, oh, hey, Tish, nice to see you. Um, carbonated water, the carbonation is not naturally occurring. The only carbonation that is naturally occurring is going to be in things like um, probiotics, some probiotics, and uh, kombucha. Uh, so the carbonation from things like La Croix and Pellegrino, uh, there are a couple of negative side effects, um, one of which it leaches calcium from your bones. Not awesome. Um, some of them have added sodium, which can definitely blow you up. But I have a direct case study. So one of my very first clients when I was starting out with nutrition, uh, he was a gentleman in his late 60s. And we were talking about, you know, all the things that he was doing. And he was eating really well. Granted, he was also an alcohol <laughs> enthusiast uh, but what happened with him is I was looking through like we've been doing this for a month why are you not really dropping weight he dropped like two pounds and he had some weight to lose uh, so we started looking into more of the details and turns out he wasn't drinking any water still water he was only drinking Pellegrino so we removed that and in a month he dropped 16 pounds that's just bananas so there is an impact <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's not the same as water. So I think more than anything, um, having it on occasion, totally fine. What I would do is if you're having questions about it and if you notice that maybe your body doesn't always feel like amazing after you have some sort of carbonated beverage, uh, apart from the addictive quality because it can be addictive, Try uh, keeping it out for a week and see how your body responds. Like you can be your own best um, nutrition scientist and you can try pulling things out of the diet and seeing how it makes you feel and be a little bit more specific about it. Mom says, I love my fizzy water, although have cut back. Yeah, I mean like, like we really say everything in moderation. Um, There's certain things that I absolutely love and I don't want to give them up. One of them is, you know, occasionally I'll have like a sugar-free monster, which I know very well that those are shitty, very shitty, um, because they have all this chemical crap in them. But I enjoy them every once in a while. I don't do it every day, and I don't also don't see a reduction in progress. Um, I don't see a reduction in any energy levels. I don't see um, that my skin is telling me that this stuff is not good for me. Um, I don't notice a difference in my sleep. So I think if you kind of go through and check some of the boxes that you feel like you're still making progress, um, you have these things in moderation, it's not an addiction, uh, and that you're not finding that you have these signals from your body that's saying, hey, dude, we don't really like this, then I think that for, for some people, it's totally fine to have it on occasion. Uh, I had a, a new client basically starting, and they were asking how do we know when something is healthy or unhealthy? I think the question was something like that. <laughs> and I was basically saying that uh, the body will tell us when it likes something and it won't like something. If it, or if we're getting too much of something or not enough of something. 
And I said, you know, if, if, you're, if your body likes what you're giving it in terms of nutrition, it will generally reduce fat, it will build muscle, and you'll have more energy. If your body doesn't like what you're giving it, it will generally put on fat, reduce muscle, and you'll have less energy. It's kind of how the body works. Um, so there's like immediate signs. Oh, hey, Jen. Nice to see you. Okay, so going to the next question. I don't think that was exactly the question that was posed, but similar to that. You guys get the idea. Okay, Kelly says, when do you look, what do you look for when selecting a new workout shoe? Coach Lisa has strong opinions about this one. Minimal drop from heel, nearly flat, in or barefoot, please, unless you're squatting and no ankle mobility and need a heel lift. This is a great question. So I would really, like, if you're having this kind of, if you're having this kind of question, you can always go to like a shoe, um, a lot of shoe stores, at least in the city, will actually test your gait and they'll test the arches of your feet so that you can actually see what's appropriate for you. Some people that have super, super flat feet, super flat shoes will not be ideal for them. Uh, so it really is person specific. And some people have issues with their feet and they actually need a little bit more support. Um, traditionally, like if your feet are all good and you don't have any issues with like high arches or really flat feet, then really flat uh, shoes for lifting can be extremely beneficial. I've kind of tried out all of them. Um, and I will notice if I have the wrong shoe that it will cause tightness in my lower legs. I'll notice cramping in my calves. Uh, I'll notice that I'm pitched forward a little bit more. We definitely don't want to lift in like the Nike Airs where there's a just a crap ton of like lift in the back of it. Uh, you want to be able to really feel the floor. And if there's a wider toe of the shoe, it will help you to spread out your phalanges, your toes, so that you can actually have a better base of support because your toes are kind of like your fingers. When you're doing push-ups, you really want to be able to dig your fingers into the ground and spread them wide. This will give you a full base of support. Same thing with your toes. You can spread your toes out onto the floor and actually dig them in, and that will really give you a solid uh, base of support when you're doing things like squats, lunges, all of that. <laughs> Lisa says, thank you for dealing with me. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted me to read that out loud or not. <laughs> for those of you at home right now, Lisa will put notes in, and then I get to read them out loud, and sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna read out loud, so this is live. <laughs> Um, next question. This is general. And this one kind of makes me giggle. So what is a, uh, it's in quotations, <laughs> diet, diet, a diet break and how do you know if you're ready for it? Okay. I, <laughs> so, uh, let me see here. First of all, this is not a diet. <laughs> you guys, Yes, you have a strategy. Yes, you have goal ranges, but a diet, well actually I should I should rephrase that because if you look at in Wikipedia, a diet basically says choosing to eat in a certain structure as a lifestyle. Yes, we are doing that. But in our general um, culture, diet basically means restriction. So we aren't restricting food items. You can make anything work. There is flexibility here. So in terms of a diet break, uh, uh, mm, uh, mm. I wouldn't necessarily say that there is a diet break. I mean, you guys have been doing this kind of intake for six years. Six years. That's not a diet. I mean, it is a diet, but it's not really a diet. It's, uh, it's essentially, it's how I live my life. Um, I don't have to try. It's just what I do every day. Um, it took some time in the beginning to like learn the systems, but Generally speaking, I have the understanding of how food's working in my body and it's become a choice. I feel good, uh, my body performs well, my body fat is where I want it to be, my muscle mass is where I want it to be, and if I want that to change, I know how to do that. So it really isn't, I wouldn't put it in a place of like we're doing this for a short period of time. And the reason that I say that is if we look at this as it's a short-term fix, we're gonna get short-term results. That's just how it works. So if we're doing this to get to a place and then we're gonna revert right back and go to whatever we were doing before, 
it's not sustainable. You're going to get to a place where you're like, oh, great, I've reached my goal. And now I get to go back to doing what I was doing before. Well, your body is going to bring you back to the body that you had before that because that was the information that got you there in the first place. So uh, this, is, this is not a short-term fix. This is essentially giving the information and the education on how to identify the food items that you're putting into your body, noticing the signals that it gives you, noticing how you feel, how you perform, how your body is progressing from week to week. If you're noticing that your body is making small, advantageous changes every week towards your goals, then you know you're on the right track. Your body is appreciating what it's giving you, what you're giving it, uh, and it's it's showing you what it thinks about it, basically. Um, if you go back to, you know, oops, I, I had three days of total excess, and then you look at your body on what it's saying that it thinks about that information after day three, then you'll be able to see how the body feels about that, essentially. Your body's always telling you whether it likes something or not, whether it's an excess, whether you're on the right track, whether you're in deficit. So it really isn't this short-term little blip on the board. It really is something that you want to learn how to be flexible with it learn how to identify how to make things that you love work for you and it's so 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 possible um so sorry that i giggled there in the beginnings in the beginning huang said did shannon say barefoot did i say barefoot i might have i don't know uh oh yeah it was in the notes uh lisa said or barefoot which is totally fine if yeah People, people absolutely train barefoot, and it's wonderful, and it's healthy to have your feet on the ground. You can also feel a lot more. Okay, one more question here, and then we're gonna we're gonna hit the hit the snooze button on this one. So, last one would love to hear recommendations for favorite restaurants in San Francisco where it's easy to eat healthy. Okay, speed answering, uh, Londa. I'm creating a PDF for this. I have already started. Uh, it'll be shared with everyone. So I'll basically start to create this wonderful little database of menus for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in San Francisco or the Bay Area, and the items that I would choose from those menus. I got you. So just off the top of my head, some of my favorite ones for like dinner are De La Rosa in um, uh, the marina. I really like getting one of their salads and then sharing one of their proteins and I'll have, kind of have a treat and share the burrata um, toast with honey on it. Oh, so good. Uh, but I'll share that with a friend. Um, I will budget for that earlier in the day when I go out to dinner there. Uh, if I want to have a glass of wine, I would skip the burrata and the toast. Uh, that is just one of the ideas, but I'm going to put a lot of other ones and then we'll share it with the group as it starts to continue and I'll just continue to build on it. So it'll be this revolving one. And if anyone has their own restaurants that they've found and they want to share with the group, please, we are un familia. Uh, so that will be it for now, you guys. Oh, awesome. So I am just heading out to go to my brother's B-Day. Thank you all for joining. I love seeing everybody on, and I will uh, see you on Friday if you can make it, and we'll go over some more movement stuff. Well, yes, we will. It'll be movement Friday now and, like, Wednesday nutrition. Mm -hmm. All right, hope you guys all have a wonderful evening, and we will see you next time.